Good afternoon, everybody. The Blue Jays are down. It's 2-1. Uh, let's see what happens. I'm Angus Watt. I'm the chair of the Alberta Order of Excellence Council, and welcome to 2015, the Alberta Order of Excellence Investiture. Would you please rise for the entrance of her honor, the Honorable Lois Mitchell, Lieutenant Governor of Alberta, and the Chancellor of the Alberta Order of Excellence. I'd also ask you please to remain standing through both the Vice Regal Salute and the invocation to follow. It's customary to refrain from singing while the Vice Regal Salute is being played. But you can applaud. I will now invite the Honorable Catherine A. Fraser. Whoops. Oh, yeah, I gotta wait for myself. <laughs> I will now invite the Honorable Catherine A. Fraser, Chief Justice of Alberta, to offer the invocation. Your Honor, distinguished guests, Mahatma Gandhi once said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Today we are gathered to honor eight extraordinary people who have each in their own way devoted much of their adult lives in service to their fellow citizens. How fitting that we are here in Government House, steeped in Alberta history, to recognize in our honorees the very highest qualities which make our province and by extension our nation and our world a better place in which to live. These outstanding individuals have dedicated themselves to improving our world, and in doing so, they've endeared themselves to a grateful public with their commitment, impressed us with their humility, and inspired us with their leadership. We are all in their debt. In a world where many have no community, we are thankful for the support of family, friends, neighbors, and acquaintances. We give thanks for this opportunity to gather together to celebrate the aspirations and accomplishments of our community. We seek the help of one another and the strength to make a difference. We ask for blessings for those men and women laboring on our behalf and upon whom we have bestowed the public trust. In recognition of the various values, beliefs, and faiths, traditions represented here today, I invite you to share in silent reflection to express gratitude in your own personal way. Peace to you all. Thank you, Chief uh, Justice Fraser. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Good afternoon, Your Honor. The Honorable Bob Warner, Speaker of the House. Members of the Alberta Order of Excellence, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this afternoon. We're here today to bestow a very special, very significant, and rare honor to eight exceptional citizens. Since the Alberta Order of Excellence was created in 1979, just 149 people have been chosen for membership, and that includes the great Albertans we're celebrating today. The Alberta Order of Excellence is part of Canada's national honor system, and it's the highest honor our province has to offer. Each year, the Alberta Order of Excellence Council considers many worthy nominations, and across the province, representing a wide range of contributions and endeavors. And the people you're about to meet are the best of the best. They are inspirational, energetic, hardworking Albertans who want a better world for people in Alberta, across Canada, and around the world. 
While each new member is unique, you'll also find some interesting common elements in the stories you're about to hear. For example, there are all people who don't believe in settling for good enough when great is within their reach or at least imagined. There are pathfinders, there are creators, there are innovators, passionate people who stand ready to travel uncharted territory. And there are also tenacious pace setters in the work to lead a positive change. These are people who understand the importance of asking tough questions of themselves and of others. You'll notice that one of the questions they ask themselves is what really needs to be done and what can I do? I think you'll find that their answers are innovative and inspiring. They remind me, they remind us that we are privileged to live in this great province and country and that the benefits we enjoy have been built up over the years of committed citizens who want a stronger quality of life for all of us. This evening, our chance is to celebrate their contributions and thank them on behalf of Alberta. And with that, I will now call upon our Lieutenant Governor and Chancellor of the Alberta Order of Excellence, her honor, the Honorable Lois Mitchell, to deliver her remarks. Good afternoon, all. So, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. As Her Majesty the Queen's representative, it's my pleasure to welcome these eight remarkable citizens to the ranks of the Alberta Order of Excellence. Reading about their varied and impressive accomplishments, I'm reminded of the saying that goes, life is like a game of tennis. The player who serves well seldom loses. It's clear that our newest members have served exceptionally well throughout their lives, and all Albertans have gained from their extraordinary efforts. Just want to kind of mention um, th three things uh, that you, I have to say thank you to you for. Um, I'm going to say to our new members, thank you for the compassion and understanding that you've shared with those among us who need a helping hand. Also, thank you for your determination, for your ability to stand strong in times of challenge, and for lighting the way for others to follow your example. Thirdly, thank you for the great curiosity and innovation that you've applied to your efforts and for the seemingly unlimited supply of energy and enthusiasm you've brought to each project that you take on. Above all, above all, thank you for your commitment to creating success, not just for yourselves, but for everyone, and for encouraging us all to reach a little further in our own efforts to serve. You are all truly deserving the highest honor our province has to offer. So kind of in closing, I'd also like to say, um, to, I'd like to recognize everyone that has supported these great Albertans along the way. Creating success is un, ultimately a team sport. And I'm certain our new members have benefited from a tireless support system over the years. So this ceremony is a celebration for all of the friends, the colleagues, and the family members as well. So thank you and congratulations to you, Dave Bissett, to Jack Donald, to Janice Eisenhower, to Dave, Dennis er Erker. <laughs> to uh, uh, Phil um, Fraser, to Stan Grad, to Jacob Massilia, and to Fritz Panikok. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing where your continued service takes us in the years to come. So thank you all for coming and enjoy this day of celebration. Thank you, Your Honor. I know it's from the heart. Well, talking about heart and fun, I've got my fellow council members that have the best task to perform today. They have the pleasure of presenting the AOE Class of 2015. 
I'll ask each council member to stand as I introduce them. The Alberta Order of Excellence council members are Barry Fickleman from Medicine Hat, Bridget Henniger from Grand Prairie, Audrey Luff from Edmonton, Patricia McLeod of Calgary, and Eric Raja from Lacombe. Please be seated. So the first presentation today will be made by Barry Fickleman. Barry. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. On behalf of the council, I'm very pleased to present David Bissett for membership in the Alberta Order of Excellence. When you ask David Bissett what advice he has for young people looking to emulate the level of success he has enjoyed over the years, his first response is a modest one. He suggests that everyone has their own path to follow, and he's not sure that it's his place to suggest how anyone should live their life. However, if you press him for an answer, two pieces of invaluable in advice emerge. Move west. <laughs> and believe that anything is possible. Since David Bissett came to Calgary some 38 years ago, he has led the business community as the head of one of the city's most successful investment firms. He's also been a tireless community leader, changing lives and inspiring other like-minded community leaders to join him in converting possibilities into reality. Over the years, hundreds of students have completed their education and are employed, thanks to David. Thanks to David's generous supportive programs, his scholarships, facilities at post-secondary schools, including SAIT and Mount Royal University. David has also encouraged positive steps towards uh, forward in environmental work, inspired by his commitment to land and wildlife conservation. His understanding of what makes our communities stronger and healthier places to be has also led to facilities like the Foothills County Hospice in Okotoks, as well as other valuable facilities and programs in Calgary, such as the Shaw Millennium Park. Perhaps most important, David's belief in visible philanthropy has encouraged other Alberta leaders to follow his example. And his belief in what's possible has helped to create a better province for the benefit of all Albertans. In recognition of his exemplary commitment to service, it is my honor on behalf of the Council to name David A. Bissett as a member of the Alberta Order of Excellence. Thank you. Thank you, Barry, and congratulations, David. Our next two presentations will be made by Eric Raja. Eric. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On behalf of the Council, I am pleased to recommend Jack Donald for membership in the Alberta Order of Excellence.
If you scan through Jack Donald's long list of accomplishments, two interesting points emerge. The first thing you notice is that the man is deeply rooted in the community life of Red Deer and central Alberta. The other thing that jumps out is the first organization Jack shared his time and talents with when he and Joan first moved to Red Deer in the mid-1960s. Jack was looking for a way to get involved, so he joined the Optimist Club. It's fitting because Jack Donald is someone who understands the power of belief, hope, and optimism when it comes to building a strong community. He also understands that optimism alone will not create success. You also need vision as well as endless supply of determination. This oil can <laughs> will tell you the story of that determination. Jack started his life by selling motor oil for 49 cents a can to make a living. Here is one of those original cans. It says BA, British American Oil. <laughs> Maybe Angus will remember this. I do. And uh, it's historians tell us that this became Petro Canada and now Suncor. Fortunately for the people of Red Deer, Jack has no shortage of both qualities optimism and determination. Jack has applied his considerable talents to his work as a business leader in a career that spans multiple sectors. He has also shared his wisdom as a member of city council and as a leader with a long list of important initiatives. That list includes Westerner Park, Red Deer College, the Alberta Opportunity Company, and Canadian Western Bank. Jack is a true entrepreneur who has found a way to create success, not just for himself and his family, but for the community and the province that he loves very much. He insists that almost anyone can become an entrepreneur if they apply themselves. But it takes a very special person to see potential and foster positive change on the scale that Jack has achieved. I asked Jack what, if anything, he would change in his life, and he had a big smile, and he said, the only thing I would like to change is the oil in my car, <laughs> which, he still, which he still does on his own for his many contributions to our province, it is my pleasure on behalf of the council to name Jack C. Donald as a member of the Alberta Order of Excellence. Congratulations, Mr. Donald. Next, on behalf of the Council, it is my pleasure to recommend Janice Eisenhower for membership in the Alberta Order of Excellence. When Janice Eisenhower was a university student, 
she had an experience that most Canadians have had in one form or another. While reading a magazine, she came across a story about oppression faced by the women of Afghanistan. And she had the same reaction that we would all have. She was horrified by the injustice these women face. I, I suspect she also gave a few words of silent thanks for the privilege of living in a country where freedom and human rights for all are enshrined in law. But then, Janice did something that few people do. She refused to simply say, ah, well, what a shame, and turn the page to the next article. Instead, she asked herself, what can I do? Her compassion for people in need on the other side of the world led to the creation of Canadian Women for Women in Afghanistan. Over the past 18 years, hundreds of volunteers have joined Janice and her co-founder in creating a better life for the women of Afghanistan and their families. Doors have opened for thousands of teachers and tens of thousands of students who understand that education is one of the most powerful weapons you can carry in the battle against fear and oppression. And in addition to building educational opportunities in Afghanistan, Janice and her organization have encouraged people here at home to learn more about the issues faced by Afghan women. One of her fans has said that Janice started with nothing but her wisdom and her big heart. She certainly has those gifts in abundance, but she also has something much more rare. Janice has the strength of purpose it takes to go from compassion to action. And her determination has started a change that will benefit women in Afghanistan for generations to come. For her remarkable service, it is my privilege on behalf of the Council to name Janice Eisenhower as a member of the Alberta Order of Excellence. Thank you, Eric. Congratulations, Janet and Jack. I'll now invite Bridget Henniger to the podium for our next presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On behalf of the Council, I am pleased to recommend Dennis Erker for the membership in Alberta Order of Excellence. Dennis Erker has worn many hats in his long career as a community builder. He's a respected leader who has offered distinguished service to his industry and to the Alberta business community as a whole. He's a passionate sports fan who has served on the boards of the Edmonton Eskimos and the CFL and worked with like-minded citizens to bring international sporting events to Edmonton. And he is also a compassionate citizen who has shared time and talent with many organizations, including the University of Alberta Hospital Foundation and the Edmonton Community Foundation. While people of all ages and walks of life have benefited from Dennis Erker's dedication, the men and women of the Canadian Forces hold a special place in his heart. For Dennis, 
It's an easy connection to make. He says, I don't think you can render a service of more importance than to put yourself in harm's way for the freedom of your country. There's no doubt that Dennis has found very meaningful ways to show his gratitude for the service that generations of Canadians in uniform have offered our nation. Dennis has done many great things in his capacity as Honorary Colonel of the Royal Edmonton Regiment. Perhaps the greatest expression of his gratitude can be seen in his tireless efforts to build Valor Place. Thanks to his commitment, injured members of the military, RCMP, and other first responders and their families can come to a place that offers hope away from home while they undergo medical treatments here in Edmonton. Dennis insists that he'll never be able to give back everything that he's received as a proud Albertan and Canadian, but I think you'll agree with me when I say that his efforts inspires us all to join in that effort. In recognition of his exemplary citizenship, it is my privilege on behalf of the Council to name Dennis Erker as a member of the Alberta Order of Excellence. Thank you, Bridget, and congratulations, Colonel. Uh, the next introduction will be made to by Audrey Luft. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On behalf of the Council, it is my great pleasure to recommend Phil Fraser for membership in the Alberta Order of Excellence. I will admit that I was initially daunted by the prospect of finding a way to describe a man for whom words hold such tremendous importance. Then I realized that no one could ever express things better than Phil Fraser himself, particularly when it comes to the central value of the arts to society. So I'm simply going to begin by sharing some of his own words. Phil has said, I compare life without the arts to a life of meat and potatoes. No sauces, no embellishments, no desserts. It's a life of not looking for or trying to create any kind of beauty. There would be no laughter, rare smiles, and no fun. Fortunately for us, Phil Fraser has spent a lifetime making sure that our plates spill over in a veritable riot of joyous colors spices and textures. He's generated countless smiles as the creator of enduring and beloved works of art, all the while encouraging artists across Canada to do the same. Phil Fraser has been many things over the years, a pioneering journalist and broadcaster, a successful and highly regarded filmmaker, a consummate writer and teacher. Perhaps most importantly, he has served as a tireless and groundbreaking champion of the arts and human rights, two elements that serve as undeniable markers of a strong, healthy, and vibrant society. Phil's biography in today's program 
tells us that he found his voice at an early age, working in radio while still in high school. He's been using that wonderful voice to great advantage ever since, decorating our world with essential beauty and light, reminding us of who we are as a province and a nation, and inspiring us to be even better. In recognition of his remarkable contributions to our province, it is my honor on behalf of the Council to name Phil Fraser as a member of the Alberta Order of Excellence. Thanks, Audrey. Congratulations, Phil. I would now like to invite Patricia McLeod to the podium to introduce our next member. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It is my pleasure, on behalf of the Council of the Alberta Order of Excellence, to recommend Stan Grad for membership in the Alberta Order of Excellence. If you haven't yet had the tremendous pleasure of getting to know Stan Grad, you can discover all that you need to know about his character from the following description from one of his long-standing colleagues. There are no errors about this man. His ears, his eyes, and his heart have guided many of his decisions. He will tell you that listening to the passion in a person's voice while watching the light in their eye is how he measures the sincerity of a person. By that measure, I can tell you that Stan Grad is as sincere as they come. He also stands out as extremely hardworking, even in a province like ours where people routinely go the extra mile. Stan Grad has tremendous passion for his province and his fellow Albertans, and he is driven in his ongoing work to make our province the best it can be. Stan has created considerable success in two sectors, energy and ranching and he has served both industries with a continuous focus on fostering excellence and innovation. And he has consistently brought the same focus to his long resume of service as a community leader. Stan pours his heart and soul into every project, whether he's giving back to his alma mater, SAIT, providing leadership to organizations like the Calgary Stampede Foundation, or helping stars to spare rural Albertans from the same grief he and his family experienced at the loss of a loved one. He has been a dedicated and humble servant of his fellow Albertans for many years and built a legacy of positive change that will benefit our province for many more years to come. For his extensive service, it is my honour on behalf of the Council to name Stan Grad as a member of the Alberta Order of Excellence.
feel good? Well, thank you very much, Patricia. And I'll ask, um, let me just me, Audrey, to return to the podium for the next presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On behalf of the Council, I am pleased to recommend Jacob Masley for membership in the Alberta Order of Excellence. There are many things about our modern world that we take for granted. We spend our days surrounded by knowledge, tools, technologies that have become so commonplace, so seemingly self-evident, that we forget it hasn't always been that way. We forget that a visionary had to step forward and say, I know how to fix that. I know how to get that done. When it comes to the complicated business of extracting bitumen from the Alberta oil sands, it took a visionary like Jacob Masley. Thanks to the work of Dr. Masley and his colleagues, the process takes half the energy that it once did. That is significant advancement for the energy industry. And I think for most people, that breakthrough would probably count as an ultimate career accomplishment. But most people aren't Jacob Masley. What has further distinguished Jacob as a visionary is the concerted effort he's invested into growing the culture of research and excellence at the University of Alberta. He has been a catalyst in building effective and enduring partnerships between academia and industry, simultaneously growing opportunities for Alberta researchers while fostering great appreciation in the oil and gas sector for how work in the lab transforms results in the field. And he's done all this while publishing extensively, traveling the world as a sought after presenter, and growing a reputation as one of the university's most respected teachers. His colleagues describe Jacob as humble, enthusiastic, and driven by the passion and joy of discovery. To that list, I would simply add inspiring and indispensable to our province. In recognition of his many contributions, it is my honor on behalf of the Council to name Jacob Masley as a member of the Alberta Order of Excellence. Thanks, Audrey. Congratulations, Jacob. Uh, and now, the honor for the final presentation this afternoon falls to Barry Finkelman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On behalf of the Council of the Alberta Order of Excellence, it is my pleasure to recommend Fritz Panacook for membership in the Alberta Order of Excellence. <coughs> you may have noticed an amusing line in Fritz Panacook's bi biography. Describing his early desire to become a historian, Fritz jokes that his parents feared their son's choice was a road to unemployment. <laughs> Those fears were clearly unfounded. Their son's love of history led to a distinguished career, um, a career distinguished by excellence and service that has benefited countless people. As a historian, Fritz has ensured that Alberta's past is preserved preserved for future generations through the development of a network of heritage sites across the province. 
He's also been a leader in work to usher history, a deeply rooted, uh, a field deeply rooted in concrete artifacts and printed words into the digital age. Thanks to his vision, Alberta's history in its many forms, its wisdom, stories, and inspiration is available to anyone at the simple click of a mouse through the Alberta Heritage Digitization Project. Fritz has applied that same approach to access in a second remarkable career spent serving adult learners in Alberta, across Canada, and around the world. His leadership at the University of Calgary and Athabasca University has been nothing short of groundbreaking and the benefits of that work have nothing less than game-changing for the people he serves. Fritz has long maintained a passion for putting learning opportunities into the hands of those who have traditionally been underrepresented in post-secondary settings. Thanks to his vision, First Nations and Métis people, working adults, people with disabilities, and those in rural and remote communities can enjoy the opportunities they deserve to learn and to build a stronger future for themselves. In recognition of that work, the Mike Stowe people of the Blood Tribe gave Fritz a name that means helps many. Two simple words that capture a lifetime spent fostering richer lives for us all. In honor of his long-standing service, it is my pleasure on behalf of the Council to name Fritz Panacook as a member of the Alberta Order of Excellence. Thank you, Barry, and congratulations, Fritz. At this time, I'd like to say thank you to uh, all of the council members and congratulations to the eight very distinguished citizens who have now joined the ranks of the Alberta Order of Excellence. But before we conclude this official ceremony, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the recent passing of a member of the order. Louis de Rocher of Edmonton was invested into the order in 2001. He was a distinguished education and business leader who also contributed to many community causes, including the promotion of French language and culture in Western Canada. I would ask that we observe a moment of silence to remember Louis and to honor all of the AOE members who are no longer with us. And today is a special day because we've just had a farm accident in Rocky Mountain where three young girls were in a farming accident and lost their lives today. So in our moment of silence today, let us include them as well. So please take a moment and bow your heads. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes the ceremony portion of the, today's program.